So this is video three of the unit four series of AP Biology, and this unit covers cell communication and cell cycle. This video in particular is going to cover feedback, which is unit 4.5. All right, so here is a picture or diagram of a feedback cycle. I want you to figure out what one through five might represent. Step one shows where the stimulus causes an initial change. Number two is that the receptor picks up that change, it detects that change. Number three is a control center that's often going to be in your brain, um, and that sort of makes sense of that change. It pools the information from the, this receptor as well as from other sources to figure out what to do. That then can communicates with an effector, which is number four, and then the effector causes a response, which is number five. So why is this an example of a feedback cycle? Think about the word feedback. The reason this is a feedback cycle shown in this diagram is that the response affects the original stimulus. So you can see in number five that this response is acting on that same variable that was interacted on by number one, the original stimulus. That brings us to the question, how could we change this model, this diagram, to show a response that's not a feedback cycle? So to change this model to something that's not a feedback cycle, it would just simply be changing the response. When it's not a feedback cycle, you can still have stimulus leading to response, but in this case, the response affects something other than that original stimulus. Next questions related to this diagram are what's the difference between a positive and negative feedback cycle, and also which of those is more common? Negative feedback cycles reduce change and maintain homeostasis. These are really common because it keeps things in balance. So for example, if um, in step one, we had an increase of something, and a negative feedback cycle, this would result in step five with a decrease of that same um, stimulus or of that same variable. Whereas positive feedback cycles amplify the change. These are less common. They can be beneficial when a system is building up to a big event, um, but they're less common. Um, in a positive feedback cycle, you would see that the stimulus and the response would be in the same direction. Positive doesn't necessarily mean good. It just means you get uh, kind of out of control. It means that there is more and more and more of something or less and less and less of something. So let's try to make this generalized diagram a little bit more specific. See if you can fill in the various parts of this cycle using the example of elevated body temperature. So this diagram shows both elevated body temperature as well as reduced, as well as reduced body temperature. For elevated body temperature, we can look at the top half of this diagram and that you see the original stimulus is that the body temperature rises above normal. That's the stimulus. The receptor and the control center in this case are both going to be uh, in the brain. You don't need to know the specifics of that, but there's a thermoregulatory center in the brain that's activated. This then talks to or communicates with multiple effectors. In this case, it's showing sweat glands as well as blood vessels. Sweat glands secrete sweat that evaporates, which causes the body to cool. Blood vessels in the skin dilate, causing heat to escape. So the response in both of these cases is that the temperature comes down. So if we started with an increase, right, the temperature rises above normal, and our end result is that the temperature reduces, what kind of feedback cycle is this? So this is an example of a negative feedback cycle, because an increase, an original sort of imbalance of above the normal temperature results in a decrease of coming down from that imbalance. Okay? Um, you also see a negative feedback cycle um, below this. So if our temperature falls too low, the same sort of process happens, but with slightly different effectors and then an opposite response. So the end response, if our temperature falls too low, is finding ways to raise our temperature up. This actually relates to uh, what a fever is. So when you have a fever, it's that your body changes its set point. So instead of your set point being sort of around 37 degrees Celsius, which is 98.6-ish in Fahrenheit, so instead of that being your set point, your control center changes its set point and says, okay, now the set point is maybe 101 degrees Fahrenheit. 
which means that now your body says, uh-oh, the temperature in the body is too cold. So it goes through um, this raising of temperature until it matches that set point. And one of the fitness advantages of a fever is that it makes the um, internal, your internal body environment less hospitable to whatever pathogens might be invading. So fever is actually a, um, a natural response of your body to fight infection. And it comes from just changing what that set point is. So here we have a diagram of a specific situation, and I want you to look for a feedback cycle. Take a look at both estrogen and oxytocin. One of them is involved in a feedback cycle and one of them isn't on this diagram. Which one is shown as part of a feedback cycle? And also, is the feedback cycle that it's showing a positive or negative feedback cycle? So the hormone showing as part of a feedback cycle is oxytocin. And the reason there is because the response affects that original stimulus. So it just goes round and round and round where the stimulus causes a change that eventually causes the change to the stimulus. Um, and this can actually get carried away because this is a positive feedback cycle. In this case, that's a good thing because what's happening here is oxytocin is triggering the uterus to contract and it stimulates the placenta to make uh, prostaglandins, which cause more contraction, which then link back and cause more oxytocin, more contraction, more oxytocin, more contraction. This is a good thing because this is um, allowing for the baby to be delivered. Um, and so this is a case where positive feedback is beneficial because it kind of ends with a big result, right? And so then the situation, the environment would be changed and that's what would put an end to this positive feedback cycle. Estrogen is not shown as a feedback cycle in this case because estrogen is just showing that it causes um, induction of oxy oxytocin, but it doesn't link back to having another effect on estrogen. So an increase in estrogen levels is not showing that it has any effect on estrogen levels. And that's why it's not part of a feedback cycle in this diagram. This was one of the shorter uh, videos because um, next video is going to be a very different kind of topic. So I want to stop here. So this is the end of unit 4.5, which was focusing on feedback.